Yes, we have the technology. We are live. Hey. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the biannual Killer Bits podcast. It is almost that now. <laughs> We do E3 and we do Christmas. That's all. That's basically how it goes down. That is true. I mean, you know. So, yes, EA did their EA Play event. They kicked off the show with Titanfall 2. And we all kind of expected it. I think, was it a day or so beforehand, they leaked, was it the single player trailer? And that was supposedly going to be their big reveal of Titanfall 2 now has single player. And it's it's a tale about a boy and his robot. I used to actually play any of Titanfall floor when it came I, out. I, I have it on Xbox. Uh, I think the, the, the biggest issue for it was uh, it, it was really fun but its population kind of died fairly quickly um, and, I, and then, then it was on I think like they sold it for, like five quid at one point point. Um, and I think Titanfall 2 I think Titanfall 2 will be good because I think it gives them an opportunity to kind of polish it and, yeah. and sort, sort out what was going on. Fun fact Titanfall is the only shooting game I've ever played where I said something on mic and then someone was like oh my god it's a girl but no, I really like Titanfall. I think a single player campaign. I mean, I don't think Halo. Well, actually, no, I do think Halo needs a single player. I don't think you know Call of Duty and that necessarily. Yeah. People buy them for their single player campaigns, but there's definitely a, a cult following out there. I mean, yeah. same with with Microsoft to a certain extent. Like with Halo, I I lo- enjoy the single player campaigns of Halo, and I think there's a really nice overarching story. But ultimately, I buy it for the multiplayer. Yeah. So I get why Titanfall One didn't have one. But at the same time, I think having a multiplayer campaign, sorry, a single player campaign is important because it starts to get people interested in the characters and interested in the franchise beyond just big mechs and shooting things. <laughs> in all fairness, in all fairness, it wasn't John Madden, John Madden, Madden, John. It was just FIFA, 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 FIFA. Well, no, it's got story I... mode now. That's yeah. The best. yeah. <laughs> How great! Once upon a time. Oh man, I bet if you get to be like a little boy in like the slums of Rio. You know, playing football and then like getting scouted. Oh. Uh, it's even better. You're now a little boy in the slums of East Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse, to be honest. What was it? Uh, the character's name was something like uh, Alex. Al- Hunt. Alex. Alex Hunter. Oh, and they pretty- they had the kind of the most kind of thesp uh, uh, rada student come on stage to do the whole bit to introduce it. I thought he was very good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in this case, this is supposed to be a, a footballer. He's he, he's, he's He's got great diction. He knows what he's talking about. This is not a football. <laughs> oh, the, the acted bit. That was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Is this like FIFA, the RPG? Do you actually get to create a character? But then it came out, no, it is just this one character. But it does kind of chart their career from, what is it, Sunday League down up to Premiership and England oh. call-ups and things yeah. like that. So th- there is something a little different there. I mean, the real question is, are you are you going to buy FIFA for the story mode? Let's be realistic here, John. No. No, exactly. <laughs> if they, get, oh, if they send us a code, career. I might actually play it for once. Yeah, but... that's, that's the whole thing, right? Like, I've, ne- I've never I never played FIFA a game in my life. But I might... Like, I now I have an interest in buying it. Yeah. As Yay, goes- she's back. Am I back? Okay, yeah. wait, there we go. We fixed it, we fixed it. But speaking of things that aren't sports, Mass Effect Andromeda is definitely not sports. No, and, uh, I have I have plenty of interest in it. It's a shame they didn't show anything about it. Yeah, it was it was another one of those. Here's a game that's coming out. We're not going to show you any of it. it. It's a case of again on Twitter. The the most amusing tweets I was seeing was yeah, but which aliens can I shag? That was the entire stream on Twitter going yeah, but show us the aliens we can shag. <laughs> no, the most important question, John, that they haven't answered is whether the Mako. The, oh no, there were shots of the Mako. Return. There were shots of the Mako. I think it was oh, there for like two it. seconds I'm or so something. I'm so excited. Wait, That's you the actually... best part. Wait, are, are you being serious right now? <laughs> are you, are you the Mako? Are you being serious right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being serious. Like, I she loves like, the like, bouncy like, buggy. Like tell. <laughs> just, just serious talk, serious talk now, yeah? <laughs> just to be clear about one thing, yeah? What are, what are your feelings on the Mako, Yaki? Oh, nothing. It's great. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was most excited for Fee. Not FIFA, uh, Fee. I think that was the one that I like the most, look of the most. And I mean, part of it is probably because 
I we do a lot of indie stuff, so I've got like the special place in my heart for indies. Even though I didn't get to play Yarny and his whatever it's called Unravel, I'm upset. I didn't haven't actually played yeah, that. Yeah, but... Fee was this year's Unravel, wasn't it? They 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 wheel out yeah. the kind of the awkward uh, indie developer from some Scandinavian country. Scandinavia, yeah, they're always Scandinavian. <laughs> <laughs> but they they um... used it to kick off their own initiative. What was it? Um, EA Originals, where they're basically yeah. becoming a publishing arm for. Indie games, I know. Which is what, like, Team 17 and Devolver oh, and stuff yeah, basically do. Yeah. No, I think Felix, I think Felix quite, cute, like, interesting. I Sometimes, like, you have, like, a song and every animal has a song and you have to communicate and something along those lines. And, but I think Felix good, though I don't think it'll hold the same kind of hype that Unravel did. Battlefield One. That was their the, big, that their big finish. And they're pulling an Xbox. They're pulling an Xbox. That's yeah, all it's case of they, they made a point of going. Was it? Every battle is a unique experience. I'm thinking it's a multiplayer game. Literally, any multiplayer game, each game is going to be a unique experience because it's it's not scripted and things like that. So it's a bit of a cop out kind of thing. Plus, people are saying, well, if it's such a unique experience, why are you showing the same trailer three times in a row? Maybe, maybe they thought it was a really good trailer. John. <laughs> maybe they were just really proud of that trailer. Like they put a lot of work in. Like we're video editors, we can understand. <laughs> And I think Battlefield 1 looks good. I think going back to um, the older warfare is better. Yeah. Like, I think that I think yeah, they did their best when they were doing World War 1, World War 2 kind of stuff. You mean um, you don't want to sp- shoot uh, gruff Americans in space? Well, like, actually, like go, go fair, Call of Duty. <laughs> actually, actually, I have to admit, though, like, as much as I can't stand Call of Duty, the trailer for the new Call of Duty look kind of cool. <laughs> Bethesda, with their second press conference obviously they they came out big last year with everything fallout and showing doom footage and this that, and the other and they just kind of showed the same stuff again yeah the bethesda were just like you like our games here are our games Ta-da! I, I, think, I, I think the most interesting thing that came out was quake champions yeah that, that, that's how they actually did start off they, they started off with quake champions basically going back to kind of id's roots with quake and that we we had that kind of a couple of well, months Quake's, ago, with Quake's Doom. roots as a as a class based shooter. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, the class based thing is <laughs> I was just like, yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah, everything's class based now. Yeah, I mean, that is the the Overwatch effect, isn't it? I suppose we've got to call it everything. Now we are going to see this kind of class based thing because we've got Lawbreakers coming out in beta, beta, whatever you want to call it. Um, Quake is going to be class based, and that. Again, it was just showing a CG trailer, so we don't know whether it's going to have that old school feel to it. You know, incredible speed zipping around. They're they're promising it was to be going to be running at 120 hertz with unlocked frame rates. That's a bold claim. Well, I mean, like what I swear, one of the old like founders of Quake is still is going to be involved with Quake Champions anyway. Yeah. So it's not like they they've lost touch or anything like that. No, I think, I mean, and I think class-based shooters are a lot of fun, and there is a market for them. The thing is, we're going to see everyone jumping on that bandwagon now. That's what's yeah. going to happen yeah. this year. I mean, the other bandwagon that everyone's jumping on is freaking <laughs> card games. <laughs> Boom! Look at that. Look at that segue. Tra- transition. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I like, I don't get me wrong, I like me some, some CCGs, but I think they take, they're a lot of investment. And yeah. I'm sure there's people out there who, like, they play Duelist, they play Hearthstone, they play Chronicle, they play Magic, they, like, they play all of them, but... I just... Don't forget um, the defunct Fable one is now in alpha, beta as well. Whatever. Yeah, there's, there's the Fable one, and there's, oh, there's not a couple more coming out that we'll cover as we get to them. Probably, but basically, yeah. hell of a lot of card games. And I just think that like the problem with, with card games in comparison to games like shooters um, is that it's quite difficult to play multiple card games simultaneously. Yeah. Not like, 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 like I, can't, I, I, I have trouble, for example, building a collection in Chronicle and in Hearthstone and in another one whereas in a first person shooter it's very easy to kind of pick up and and play whereas i think ccds at least require a little bit more commitment in terms of collecting so it the the market saturates much more quickly yeah there there wasn't just the the ccg they did bang on a little about um what was it elder scrolls online and there was some weird whooping from the audience thanks everyone and things like that. There was just this one woman way at the back just screaming her head off whether she was having an hysterical fit and they were having to carry her away, but... It's those people who have about 8 million... (laughs) It's it's definitely the people who have about 8 million years in Skyrim, that's for sure. Those are the people who play Elder Scrolls Online. And talking about Skyrim... Hey, there you go, John. There we go, yes. um, 
again, this was leaked way beforehand. Uh, Skyrim Remastered coming to the current gen consoles. Um, we we didn't see this coming at all. No way, of course. I'm I'm really bored it's, of I, I would say it's money for old rope, but I don't think there's much rope left now that they've milked it that hard. No, people will still buy it. Let's be realistic. They, they here. will. It's, it's Skyrim. Skyrim. I'm I'm really bored of remasters. I think that it's uh, what video game companies do when they start to run out of ideas. Or it's they money for old rope. In. They just exactly, give it a lick exactly. of paint, shove it out the I door, sixty dollars. There you go. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I, I've enjoyed playing some remasters as much as the next person, but it just seems like every company, instead of making new games these days, is like, oh, you know, remember this game that was popular? We're going to remaster it. I mean, the only one that they said that, that wasn't a sequel, sequel actually was a sequel, and that's well, great. Well, yeah, it's, it, again, is it a sequel? Because it, it bears no resemblance to the Prey 2 trailer that was shown, what, three, four years ago. It, it looks completely different, because, I mean... Yeah, but that... it's not like they're releasing Prey 2 and this game this is what that became but this yeah is, this is the thing that bugs me though i don't understand why they have to make it a sequel just call it a new fucking name i don't yeah. if you're making a new game make it a new game why yeah. you well, <laughs> this is but this basically what? looks like bethesda's version of uh dead space doesn't it but right the, the, and i hate dead space dead space is a fucking horrible game <laughs> like, holy shit it's terrifying why would you why would you play that but it was a very Why? cool trailer. I, I do do admit that it, it was quite a cool trailer, and it did kind of build up that kind of tension and suspense and things like that. But it, it looked awesome, and then they called it prey. I was like, <laughs> what? what? Why? Why? <laughs> this is like this is like Yaki's you know Yaki's entire E3 is they they did this really cool trailer, and then they called it Call of Duty. And I was like, <laughs> why? They did this really cool trailer, and then they called it prey, and I was like, but why? <laughs> But, I mean, if you look over the kind of rest of the stuff that they, they were kind of announcing, like Fallout 4 DLC, like, <laughs> I am not getting hype about DLC. You know, you know, if I wanted to build a vault, I could play Fallout Shelter, John, because it's now coming to PC, PC as well. Yes, it is. I've already sunk enough hours of my life into that pointless, <laughs> shitty fuck of a game. It's not even a game. It's just like... It's a cash it's like cow. An, it's like an obligation. It's like a... Ugh. Ugh. It's like doing your taxes or being uh, attending jury duty, or for feeding your children, <laughs> <laughs> or having like a crazy girlfriend. Like at first, you're like, "Oh, this is fantastic! This is great!" And then as time goes on, you start to realize that like this isn't fun anymore. And, then, and like you, you're not you're not doing what you're doing out of fun or enjoyment. You're doing it because you feel like you have to, and you need a way out. But, but, but you're not sure that you can escape safely. That's what fucking this Fallout is saying a lot is. about your relationships. For <laughs> oh, and my crazy ex-girlfriends, yeah. <laughs> the, the, that last big title Bethesda did, well, not so much announced, but they did show off more of, um, was Dishonored 2. They showed a, a lot of the gameplay, they showed the kind of the start of the game, you know, which character you're going to play, and how Emily you know, kind of traversed um, this kind of first level. The, the like... cool thing is, well, you can play through the entire game without any special powers. Like, no supernatural powers. So they can be like, hey, you want some supernatural powers? You can be like, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And then play through the entire game, like, without them. Yeah, I mean, I that, like... that, that, that was one thing. Not so much about the special powers, but they, they said there was one particular area that, that your kind of supernatural powers didn't work in because it was like a, 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 you know, an eldritch bomb had gone off in this place and you couldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, you could use a time manipulation device and it turned into, suddenly turned into Soul Reaver. Where you were jumping between kind of two different realms, you were jumping between the present and the past using this device with, to solve puzzles, and that was very, very cool. I thought. Ubi started their conference the way they always start their conference with dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's favoriteest dance game ever is unsurprisingly getting a new iteration. And, and I don't yeah. think even Ubisoft care now because they literally just said, "Did the song and dance now?" But just um, dance seventeen. And then they, that was it. There was no more mention of it. I think the is, they've got the message now. Nobody cares about Just Dance. It's, it's marketed to, you know, like, teenage girls. That's the way I see it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually quite like playing Just Dance, but it's definitely like, a, you know, you have your mates over kind of You have to be pissed game. to play it. Exactly. And they have to have a freaking big-ass room to play it because yeah. it requires a lot of space. Tom We're, Clancy. Yes, we went into Wildlands. Um, yeah. This doesn't look like a Ghost Recon game. It looks like it's Far Cry with your mates. 
I mean, it's like at the end of the day, like, you know, they, I think they've just started putting Tom Clancy at the start of game names to make them sell. And now at this point, they're putting Tom Clancy Ghost Recon at the start of games, like, to make them sell. This is this is how, how it's done now in yeah. Ubisoft. It's like, it we were gonna, really... in the future, we're going to have toast Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, Just Dance 2020. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it's going to be. I'm calling it now, you guys. I mean, a lot of Ubisoft games are kind of going down the cookie cutter route of, you know... Assassin's Creed and Far Cry and uh, Watch Dogs, they're all kind of that cookie cutter. I mean, there was even the point where the guy was standing on a cliff and he was doing the whole spotting thing. You go, oh, look, there's a watchtower. There's some guards. You know, pinging them like uh, you do in stuff like Far Cry. So mm -hmm. it, it, they have a formula and they just stick to it, whatever the game is now. Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of what it is. But I mean, I'm sure it'll be successful. Like, <sighs> these games typically are. After what Wildlands, though, I think Ubisoft peaked because what did we have? The the fractured butthole. John. Yes, they brought there out Matt and Trey. Yes, this we had, we had Matt and Trey. Yeah, I mean the way they they started, they they had this trailer, and I I was already writing down. Oh, okay, this is the Watch Dogs bit. No, no, it was because <laughs> they did this kind of spoof trailer. They were almost taking the piss out of themselves, and it was perfectly pitched and. We actually got to see some of the game as well. They 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 did the whole kind of the, the premise of it, and they they set up how the the whole civil war happens. And, and it's I mean, pretty, I admit, it's... I've not watched South Park in years, but I I will play the shit out of this game because it, it it just seems like it has it's hitting all the right beats. It is just perfectly pitched. I think. No, I agree, and it's also it's also nothing like um, anything else there is really out there. No. Like. It's so kind of far out there in terms of the humor and what have you that it's it's definitely kind of quite refreshing in some senses. Plus, it's like one of the very few situations where I'll be able to use the term coon and not like <laughs> on the internet. So, <laughs> but going back to to VR, obviously we had Eagle Flight, the game where you burp at other birds. <laughs> That's what I could understand from it. So Eagle Flight is this VR game where you've got like three v three birds and you have to get a prey item to a nest. So it's kind of like eagle football um but the thing is while you're flying around you can shoot at your enemy but it's like gusts of wind yeah. and i'm like well i i, I like you're not farting because you're flying and that would go the other way so that basically i'm pretty sure that eagles are burping at each other, and like, <laughs> each other. um it looks like the kind of it looks like it would make me feel sick more than <laughs> i mean what did you guys think um i wasn't imp that impressed with eagle flight but the next one they showed did kind of tickle my fancy a little because they uh, did the whole, what was it, Star Trek the Bridge Simulator. And it did actually look like it could be quite funny. It reminded me of that little indie game, I can't remember what it was called, like Bridge Simulator or something like that. Artemis? Artemis, yeah, that's Artemis, it, that's yeah. it. It is think... essentially that, but in VR, because it's four players, so you have one person's the captain, one's helm, one's engines, and one's weapons. People were geeking out about the fact that they had... Um, uh, LeVar Burton uh, come on stage and that and was geeked I think, about it. I honestly think every company who wants people to be excited about the game should have LeVar Burton. Yeah. <laughs> because he is the most enthusiastic person he, he... ever. Like, like you know, we don't need, you know, just like your your, your generic <laughs> shill about how this game is. He was like, I was just like, I, this game looks terrible. And he terrible, seemed but, genuine but, as well. That was the he whole seems thing. like he's having the bestest time ever. This, like, this, this I is mean, an Ubi soft show, show and we've got somebody who actually sounds genuinely excited to be there. <laughs> yeah, like he was the most enthusiastic. Guy, like I was like, I hate VR, but I will, I will buy VR if he was selling me it. Like, <laughs> you know, there, would, there would be nothing that I could do. Like, if I want to have that much fun. Like, holy smokes! Yeah, that's right, a future moving on, moving on. We then had For Honor. Oh, uh, you, I, you can oh, the, the guy that came out and introduced it, the dev. What was his name? Uh, Jason Vanderberg. He looks like he should appear in the game. <laughs> This guy looks like a fucking Viking, <laughs> and it, 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 just the, the most epic voice and beard combo ever. I mean, I thought it was. I the thing is, when I watched the trailer though in the gameplay, I thought it just looked like Rise. It's like Rise, but you can be a Viking if you want. Yeah, because I mean, when they uh, initially debuted the kind of reveal and that last year, it was very much pitched as this is a multiplayer only game. This year, they come out and go, well, there's a single player in it, and it plays out like rise essentially because the multiplayer they had like you know two squads fighting each other didn't yeah. they and it looked a bit much more kind of tactical in terms of the type it was, of a, it was a bit kind of did. king of the hill capture the flag type kind of scenario wasn't it whereas this is 
it, it, it almost looked like um, Dynasty Warriors because it's just one guy going up against hordes of kind of just meek dudes and then fights a boss at the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit sceptical. It looked good, though. It did look good. You have to, come on, you have to admit it. that. It's just because you're buying a new graphics card and you're like, but it looks yeah. good. Yeah, I'm, buy I'm buying a new PC, putting a new PC together just to buy all play all the games and I have to have decent looking games to play. Yeah, even if they're not that funny, but look how good it looks. Exactly, you guys. exactly. I got trolled on Twitter. <laughs> I'm telling you guys a story. I got trolled on Twitter. So I was watching the Ubisoft one, right? And like 10, 15 minutes before they actually announced Grow Up, someone tweeted, Oh, I'm so excited for Grow, uh, Grow Home 2. And I did a quick Google search of Grow Home 2 and nothing came up. So then I thought, oh, you know, there must have been like a trailer where there was like a tree growing or something. And he's making a joke about like that, that this game is this, this AAA game is Grow Home 2 when in fact it's not. So I was like, oh, man, I got really excited there. Uh, I got really excited there. And then I found out that and then I thought realized you were making a joke and now I'm sad. And then... Uh, <laughs> And then he was, Ten like, oh, minutes later, he was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I was like, well, you know, I mean, I was probably one of the few people who actually know what Grow Home is. Everyone else would be like, the fuck is Grow Home? And then, and then 10 minutes later, and then, oh my god, it was, it was an emotional roller coaster job. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Yes, but we're already fighting over who gets to play it this time, though, don't we? Yeah, well, we're, we're fighting over a lot of who gets to play things, and Yaki's just crying in the corner. That's <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'll play uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, then. <laughs> yeah. Watch Dogs 2, the trailer was hilarious. He had this little freaking robot thing that nobody noticed wheeling around this room full of people. Yeah. I was just like, oh, dear. I mean, I think, I think, or oh, I hope, Yubi learned from Watch Dogs 1, and I think you could see that they kind of toned back E3 well, in terms of the, kind the, of the main they character were doesn't look like a complete dick. Well, they they do look quite kind of hipsterish and things like that, but they they don't come across as you know Aiden Pierce. Oh, my whole family's been killed. I'm going to go and shoot some people because I'm a mad with the world type idea. This is just a hacker going. Oh yeah, I'm just going to hack some shit and fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> lols. Yeah, it, it, this guy does seem like he's just doing it for the lols. I, I think I think like Watch Dogs Two. It, I think it could be good. I think that if they learn from the mistakes they made with Watch Dogs One, and I think the fact that they now, if they start cycling, you know, alternating Watch Dogs with Assassin's Creed, that gives both franchises space to grow, which is necessary, uh, given however many iterations of uh, Assassin's Creed that we've had. Um, and now set in San Francisco, or San Francisco in the <laughs> and now set in the modern day yesterday. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> I say, what the hell was steep? I have, I haven't heard about this. Oh, yet. this was when I... Ubisoft peaked. Damn it! Um... <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> yeah, this was their big new IP. Basically, get some people from some small studio at the foot of the Alps talking about a skiing game. It, it's Red Bull, the game. It's not literally. just skiing, John. You can snowboard and float on like the wings of love. And watch or your that best friend is. careen into a mountain and die horribly. <laughs> Did you see that trailer? Did you see that gameplay where the guy, guy's wingsuiting down the mountain, just guy zips in front of him, crashes into him. Oh, you hear realistic. the bones breaking. That Wait, guy uh, is dead. He's cr look, crumpled up on a John, mountain somewhere. Let's, let's be realistic here, right? If you were playing that sort of game, are you going to gracefully, you know, like, slide down the mountain as the guy in the wingsuit skims across, like, your head and the guy on the snowboard does, like, a 8 million degree revolution? No, you're going to be crashing into trees left, right, and center. So I'm, I'm happy that they were at least realistic to their, to their theme. Somebody in chat just goes, it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's basically that's basically how it goes. I think Steep will be good fun. I think it looks good fun. I mean, there's not much to it in terms of plot or storyline, but it, I think it, it's 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 classed as one of these social games. You know, you basically group up with people, go down a mountain, you group up some with somebody else. It's it. There doesn't seem to be kind of much to it other than that. I mean, I'd love to see a, another kind of SSX game. So because you're saying you don't think it would be fun I, I if like you and Yaki arcade met type. in the Alps? Me in I my like glorious wingsuit. <laughs> in real life or in peak? <laughs> no, in real life. 
don't really know where you're going. I with get this. into my wingsuit every weekend. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, a GoPro is definitely within our budget, right? <laughs> I, I, I bring my bones out at the end of every month. <laughs> I mean, I think I think it's different, right? That's decided, aside from the fact that it's basically exactly the same as snow, it's, it's yeah. different from what we normally see. We normally see, you know, multiplayer shooters, first-person story games, card games, multiplayer, like multi-class shooters, or what's the other one that they do? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Dark Souls lookalikes or Dark Souls esque. Oh, here's Dark Souls, but it's steampunk. Oh, here's Dark Souls, but everything is green. Oh, here's Dark Souls, <laughs> but everybody walks around on their hands and uses their feet <laughs> to attack people with swords, like. That's that's the flavor of the month. So I think Ubisoft doing something different, um, like Steep, is quite interesting. Uh-huh.